and and uh you know the ring is just it's just a, a little plus but you know we we all I think every fighter respect each each another you know you have some that don't but more or less I think they respect each other after the fight and before the fight it's just when they get in the ring it's about business and 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 you have to respect that I want to give a big shout out to uh, Boxing Science 2.0. I checked your interview on Instagram. It was a great interview. It's almost like everybody knows the fight you want, which is David Benavides. Realistically, if you can't get that fight, what other fights can, can you get? You know, after I don't, uh, champ, uh, championship. Uh, I keep stating that uh, I want a championship. I don't care who it's against. Uh, I'll go after any any of the champions. I don't care, uh, but. You know, David, I think I deserve my rematch. Uh, he thinks he, he just beat me and stopped me. I got stopped because of a cut. Did he cause the cut? Yes, of course. But he wasn't beating me up to that cut, my opinion. You know, and, yeah. and it's a lot of other people's opinions. But like I say, uh, I can't knock him if he don't because it's a business decision. You have Caleb Plant uh, that's undefeated. You have David Benavides. I think that's uh, – that's a, a marquee fight, especially for the both of them, uh, in a business aspect. I, you get your money, you know, get your money any, any means necessary, and I'm not knocking him if he don't do the rematch. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? I had a great chat with uh, Denise Estrada in terms of cuts. Um, you know, Bobby Jack when he fought Marcus Brown, I think his cut was actually more severe, and then he stopped it. So in my head, I'm like, why would they stop your fight with Benavides? No, like, I, uh, I can't say his was more severe because okay. if, if you look at mine, because mine was literally under the eyelid, so okay. and his was in the middle. So all the blood going to rush to his side. His cut was bad. I'm not saying it wasn't. He was a warrior. He fought through through it all. And if I if my coach didn't stop it, I would have kept fighting too. But when you have a 22-year-old like David Benavides – and he's coming to fight, I'm at a disadvantage with the cut already. And I respect my trainer for stopping it. Was I mad at him? No, not at all. Uh, because I know what I was doing in the fight. I was, I, I'm just looking forward to the rematch. Will you give it to me or you won't? You know, you say you was beating me, we'll prove it. And, yeah. and let's do it again. Yeah. And, and just to see your demeanor in terms of, you know, because a lot of fighters, when, when a coach stops it, you're usually mad. It's a competitive sport already, yeah. and sometimes most fans don't understand that you guys go in the ring not knowing if you guys are going to come out safe and, and healthy to your family. So, you know, that's another prop to you because it takes a, it takes a, a lot of great, a, a great amount of pride and also um, almost like sportsmanship to kind of understand where your coach come from for stopping the fight, you know, or calling yeah. the fight off, you know. Uh, understandable. I mean, like I say, your coaches is there to look out for your best interests, uh, e even if you don't see it. You know, we say we want to go out on our shield, and we do. Uh, but our coaches see something, especially if you're at a disadvantage, uh, that, that we don't see in the ring because we're warriors and we want to keep fighting. But he's just looking out for my best interests. He want to live to see me r uh, raise my kids and, and, and do better. We're, we're friends before we're coaches and fighters. Super middleweight is also getting actually really hot. You know, a couple of years ago, middleweight was the division. Now most of those guys are moving up to your, your weight class. So in, in terms of just the next two, three years, it seems like there's a lot of great fights for, for yourself and other I won't be there two, three years. I won't. Okay. No, I won't. I think I think I I have a couple more fights in me. I'm 35 years old. It's, it's young dogs in and out, man. And and uh, I, I just, I just want to leave with, uh, my wits. I, I'm I'm financially stable. Uh, I'm cool, and uh, just just I want to get in there, being a competitor that I am, and not take a loss my last fight. I think any competitor will know that. And I'm not going out there looking for an easy win. I wanna I want to fight. You know I wanna if I can get a championship I want a championship fight. If not I want the next best thing. I'm not like I said I'm not going out there looking for something easy just to get a win. I want to fight. One of the comments that I remember, we, I was on live with um, Boxing Science 2.0. We were talking kind of about Charlo versus Benavides at 168. I think you said Charlo, if, if I'm not mistaken. I think you. Was I think Charlo. Charlo. I think Charlo would beat him. I, th okay. I, I do. I think Charlo would beat him. I think he will. Uh, I mean, he'll just outbox him. I, I, I honest, and I do think 
like I'll buy when I say I'll box, I think he will hit him with a couple of big shots. Will David be a competitor? Yes. I mean it's David Benavides. We know that. But uh like I said, I think Charlo would beat him at the end of the day. Okay. Because one of the arguments me and him were going back and forth was, you know, for me it was like going up to a new weight class, it's not easy. You know, sometimes no. you can yeah. be unsure if the power is going to translate to the new weight class. So for me it was like maybe you should take one. I don't want, I don't like, this. I hate saying tune up, but just a fight to kind of. I mean, get and, and, and you can't say no fight is a tune up because everybody is, is in there fighting. I mean, you're risking your life no matter who's in the ring. Correct. No matter who's it, who it is, you're the underdog or, or not the underdog. Uh, you're still getting in there risking your life for that, for that, uh, for that win or to get in there and, you know, entertain the fans. That's what we do it for the fans. And, and I think that's uh, is is no tune up. People is coming to fight. People is coming, to, especially with the Charlos. They want to beat them. Uh, so it, it it won't be no tune up. It'll be a fight. Okay, okay. Just moving forward a little bit. Um, the last two days we was hearing a possible great welterweight matchup: um, Errol Spence and Danny Garcia on pay per view. Yep. First of all, what were your thoughts about that? Uh, I think it's a hell of a fight. I think both of them are warriors. Both of them are coming to fight. Uh, if you've seen Danny Garcia fight, I think a lot of people underestimating his, his power. Uh, he can hit, and everybody knows that. Uh, Earl Spence never stops. Uh, body shots, he never stops coming. I mean, he's uh, he's one of those pressure fighters, you know, and can pressure bust the pipes. That's yeah. the whole thing, and, and we will see when they fight. There you go. And we got to also give props to Errol Spence because after his hor horrific um, accident that happened for him, you know, yeah. a lot of people would have said, you know, get your confidence back. Go see how you are. And for him to yeah. take a Danny Garcia, it's, it's almost like a, like a, like almost, I don't want to say it's a, it's a bad thing, but it's like big props to him though. That's. I mean, I mean, because he, he feels, he feels ready. I mean, that's what any fight, any fighter, if you feel ready and, and you're, you know, you recover from, especially the accident that he been in, go for it. Uh, Don't, don't lower your competition because somebody tells you to, you do what you want to do, especially in this game, and, and you'll see how 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 it turns out. I think uh, I think it'll be a good competitive fight. How how's your impression about Earl Spence this last two years? Because you know he beat Sean Porter, he beat Kel Brook. I mean that was not two years ago, but a couple years ago he beat uh, Lamont Peterson too in his resume, and then he fights Danny Garcia. I think would that solidify him as the number one guy in terms of a, of a resume standpoint? I, I think he's there. Him. I think he's there. I think uh, especially with a guy like Sean, you put a guy like Sean Porter in there with him, and then you go to Kell Brooks' home city and beat him and stops him. Uh, it's He's there. Uh, he, I don't think he really has to prove nothing to nobody. I think he know where he stands, especially in the pound for pound. You know, it, it's disrespect if you don't even have him in your top three, and that's for anybody. I don't care who you are. I think it's disrespectful. I think you see what the boy does. You see what he has. You put Lemachenko up there, and he only had 12 fights or 13, whatever, how many fights he got. Yeah. But, uh, like I say, I, I think he proved his worth. Okay, okay. I'm just going to answer this quick question for this fan. He kept saying this. He said, what about Chris Eubank Jr. at 168 with you? I guess if you want to answer that. He won't, he won't come up no more. He, he, he got 60. He knew 68 was too tough. Mm, okay. In terms of Lomachenko, you know, him and Lopez are supposedly going to fight sometime this year if it does happen. You know, people ask me who I got. Personally, I got Teofimo Lopez. That's, that's what my heart says. Me too. My head tells me. You know, no, that's what like, I got. I, I got I got him too. I think. No, I got, I got, I got him too. I think he's a, he's, he's too, I think he'll be too much for Lomachenko. I think Lomachenko is sick, slick, but I think he'll be too too much, too too fast, too powerful, too slick uh, for Lemachenko. I think he'll I think he'll get the victory. Yeah, because a lot of people, you know, regardless of how much Salido weighed when he fought Lemachenko, he's a pressure fighter, and I feel like Tilfimo is, you know, like with no disrespect, two times, three times better skillful wise than uh, Salido. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, even Devin Haney, another great fighter. You have uh, Javante Davis, so it's a whole stack division at 135. Yeah, I think I, I think it is too. I think uh, I think it's a lot of competition down there, and we just need to make the fights happen. That's in any way for any promoter, for any any wherever you at, match room, top rank, premier. 
I think everybody needs to come together and, and, and make good fights. I think the fans want to see good fights. I think every even the analysts, the boxing analysts, the people, the reporters, you guys, you guys want to see good fights, and we want to give good fights. But when you don't have two people uh, or everybody coming together to, to make these fights, it's a problem. You know, it, it doesn't – it doesn't hurt. It, it hurts the the fighters and not the fan. You know, not the other people. It hurts the fighters, and I, I think that's where we're going wrong. I think when you see UFC, they make fights because they're under one organization. But with boxing, I think we have to get get to back to that with just fighting. You know, we if this guy is want to fight and we agree to fight, let's fight. Yeah. And the perfect example was this February with Wilder and Fury. You know, one is in PVC, the other one top rank, and they also were uh, collaborating with the undercard fighters, which was a great event overall. So if that could be done, why can't other fights be done? And, 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 but and, and then again, I think that it was signed before, so they had no no choice but to do it. You know, when he signed with top rank, I think he signed before. I think he signed the contract before he even signed with top rank. He was just looking for a good promoter. But like you say, we still need that. We still need to fight. We still need the Arrow Spencers and the T Buds. We still need the uh, the Anthony Joshuas and the Wilders. We still need the Furies and the Joshuas. We need fights like that for boxing to keep keep his hope alive. Shit. I yeah. mean, it is what it is. I mean, we're getting outdone by a sport that literally just just got his not just got his name but just got his name boxing been around for centuries and centuries man and we should be on top as one of the best combat sports ever man, we're not the, yeah and once upon a time two years ago boxing was the sport in america it was the number yes. one sport and and that's what ultimately like the way you're expressing yourself the way i, I love boxing like we want to bring it back to where it should belong number one yeah at the end of the day i agree Man, somebody asked, give me one second. Um, somebody asked, if you ever see yourself being a promoter down the road? No. no. I mean, I, I kind of I kind of want a few fighters, but if I was, I, I will pick and choose my my fighters. Uh, I, I do got a promotional company. I just, I, I want, and if I, like I said, if I do, I want to pick and choose my fighters. I don't want, I want one to come up. I don't want one who's just been champion. Or or is still you know in a hunt for a championship. I want to build one until uh until it's until he's champion. Okay, I'm, I don't know if any any of the fans actually in terms of like recent people moving up 68. What's your impression? What's the impact that Danny Jacobs can make at 168? Not including yourself at the moment, you know, as a as a fan. What do you think about? Uh, I, I mean, I, I think he had a tough time making 60. So 68, I think he'll be there. I think he'll be uh. I think he'll be. I mean, in the contentions, he's still he's still got a few years on him. Uh, I think he's a few years behind me. So, uh, I mean, I think it's good. I think it's it, like I say, it's good for boxing, especially when you can make fights at sixty eight uh, with a Danny Jacobs. Yeah. I even even I think he said in an interview that he has one fight left with Matchroom, and then he's like basically a free agent. And I think somebody was commenting Jacobs fight with yourself. I, I, I'm assuming you would never. Back I mean, I will fight. fight. I will fight Jacobs. I mean, uh, because it's at the end of the day, it's a business, and that's what I don't think people understand that we're friends. Yes, but at the end of the day, it's a business. You know, will will LeBron play Carmelo? Yeah, because it's a business. I mean, that's what you have to do especially to solidify yourself in this game. I will fight Danny Jacobs. Take me over to match room. I'll fight him. I mean, yeah. it is. I told Eddie, I told Eddie, give me, give me triple G. I don't give a fuck who I fight. Just give me somebody. 